what in the world is going on with GameStop stocks right now? It's the end of February 2021 and GameStop stocks are back at it. So before I get into my theories and conjectures as to why the GameStop stock is skyrocketing in value again right now, a month after it happened originally, I need to explain very quickly what a short squeeze is. In really basic terms, the way a short works is that somebody borrows a stock from an entity, say a brokerage, and then they say, oh, I'll give this stock back to you in a little bit. Don't you worry about it. And then they go right after they purchase the stock and they sell it to somebody else for about the same price. And then what happens, or so they hope, is that the stock price falls down so that they can then go buy the stock back from somebody else at a lower price and then give that stock back to the original person they borrowed it from. And in this way, they can make a bit of money for each stock that they do that with. Now, this happened with GameStop. A lot of hedge funds were betting against the GameStop stock, and so they decided to hold short positions on the stock. And then what happened was a lot of people realized that there was a lot of short interest in GameStop. And they decided, hey, we can do something about this and make a lot of money on this potentially because of their risk that they took in shorting these stocks in the first place. And so what they did is they decided to buy a bunch of GameStop stocks, and this drove up the price really high. And this goes against the hedge fund's original plan in buying back the stocks at a lower price and caused them to have to either buy back at a higher price or pay interest for every day that they're not returning the stock to the original entity. And in their desperation, the hedge funds might decide to buy back stocks at higher prices just to get out of that position. And by doing this, they won't continue to bleed money. And so that's just a brief overview of how a short squeeze works. So anyway, this all happened about a month ago and the prices hit about three or $400 before they tanked. And this happened for a number of reasons that I'm not gonna get into right now. But suffice it to say that a lot of people held onto those stocks despite that fall. And now that you understand what a short squeeze is, you can appreciate how excited a lot of people are that it's happening again right now. So let's dive into some of the reasons why I think another short squeeze is happening with GameStop a month after the original one happened. But before we begin, I want to be extremely clear that none of this is financial advice. All of this is just in my wild imagination and it's all just my own crazy conjecture. So don't take any of this as serious or fact or true. Who knows if it is? It's just my guess and my guess is as good as yours. Okay, so I actually think that there are three main reasons why the GameStop stocks are skyrocketing right now. And the first has to do with DFV, or Deep Effing Value, or Roaring Kitty, or Keith Gill, or whatever other moniker you know him by. Recently, he had to attend a hearing held by the House Committee on Financial Services, where he rejected the notion that he was the cause of the GameStop frenzy that occurred about a month ago. He attended this hearing virtually, and if you watched it, you may or may not have noticed that in the background there was a poster with a cat on on it. And that poster said, hang in there. Now, personally, I think maybe that was a call out to all of his Wall Street Bets friends who he knew would be watching, telling them, hold on to these GME stocks because they're going to go back up. Now, this is all conjecture. I'm not really sure if that was actually his intent, but regardless, I think it had the same effect. I think it really excited people that he was still really gung-ho for this stock. Anyway, we later learned by Keith Gill himself, that he earned $7.8 million off of GameStop stocks in the previous surge in prices. It is true that my investment in that company multiplied in value many times. And shortly after the hearing, Mr. Kitty. I'm not a cat. Okay, you're not a cat. Anyway, shortly after the hearing, he doubled down and he bought way more GameStop stocks. Now this, in and of itself, wouldn't be very exciting, but then he announced to people on social media what he had done. And I think this is further urging people to also reinvest and buy more GameStop stocks. Even if he didn't say so explicitly or tell people to go buy the stock explicitly, I feel like that by sharing that he still thinks that this stock is going to go up in value, he's urging other people to also invest in this stock, allegedly. Again, pure conjecture. Who knows if this is true? Okay, so basically my first point was that Keith Gill is drumming up all this hype around GameStop stock again for a second round. My second theory has to do with the CFO of GameStop itself. Now a couple days ago we learned that the CFO of GameStop would be resigning. I believe he'll be leaving at the end of March or so. I'm not really sure. Anyway, it doesn't matter when he's going to be leaving. The important thing is that he announced it. And this is important for a couple reasons. The very first of which is, again, just my theory. Maybe it's not even true. 
But I think maybe he had a ton of stocks, and he realized that if he got away from the company, he would no longer be bound by its rules not to trade those stocks because of insider trading regulations. And so maybe if he distanced himself from the company and quit his job or resigned, then maybe he'd be able to sell them at the then elevated price of around $40 a share. Now, if he held a lot of these shares, then he could be a gazillionaire easily at $40 a share. Or maybe he realized that he really wanted to sell the stocks and maybe he wasn't bound by the restrictions at the time and maybe he could sell them immediately, but maybe he didn't want to drive down the value of the stocks by selling off vast amount of the, his shares. Because when C-level employees of a company do this, like CEOs or CFOs, typically other people outside of the company can begin to panic and panic sell all of their shares and cause the price to just plummet. So maybe he decided that before he started selling all of his shares, he would exit from the company and then sell them and make all of his profits that way. Again, just conjecture. I have no idea if this is true. And the other thing that may have happened is maybe he was voluntold to leave GameStop. I think this may be the case because maybe the executives of GameStop really wanted to really restructure the company and find somebody that could really take them in the direction that they wanted to go. So all of these conjectures seem really rational to me and plausible, but again, I'm really not sure of what's true and what's not. So again, just it's just guesses, guys, really. So why then, a couple days ago when he announced his imminent exit, would the GameStop stock not have spiked in price? Well, maybe his departure from GameStop really has nothing to do with the current spike in price. Maybe they're totally unrelated. And maybe this current run up in value is caused by fear of missing out or FOMO and greed. Or maybe it was caused by actual legitimate logical reasons and maybe this is a valid new short squeeze based on logic. And honestly, I think it's a combination of these things. So part three of my theory is that I think that Wall Street bets and the people therein are really pushing this stock and telling everyone how much they love the stock and really driving up the hype and getting other people to buy into the stock to help drive up the price. And I think probably the people who are already holding many shares of GameStop are the people pushing the stock right now. I think a lot of these people are people who are just trying to get rich quick and people who may not believe in the actual value of GameStop as a company. And maybe some of these people lost out in the bubble that happened last month. And maybe they're trying to recoup some of their unrealized losses. What I do know is that it seems earlier today, there may have been a surge of traffic that caused an outage in Reddit. Now, why would that be happening? It's because maybe a lot of people were going to the Wall Street Bets page to see what was happening with the GameStop stock as it started to spike. And sure enough, when I hopped on there myself, all I saw was meme after meme about people with their diamond hands and how GME was going to go to the moon. And this was it, boys, we're gonna do it again. And all of this crazy stuff. And so there is without a doubt a lot of hype being driven by the Wall Street's bets community on Reddit. However, when I was on Reddit, I did come across a post made by turdferg23. And I said to myself, somebody with that name must know what they're talking about. <laughs> But jokes aside, he did seem really smart in his post, much smarter than me about this particular topic. His post made me believe that perhaps there's more to this than just the hype. Maybe there's a legitimate reason that we should short squeeze the stock because we might be able to make a lot of money if we do. Again, I'm no professional, I'm not giving you advice, I'm simply stating my opinions here. So I read Turdferg 23's post and honestly, I didn't understand half of it. For example, what the heck is a dark pool? Or what exactly is an ETF and how does it work exactly? How is it different from a stock? I'm not very experienced in these kinds of investment strategies and so I'm still learning. But fortunately, I kept reading and I came across a response in the post made by S.G. Johns, 1987. I wonder what year he was born in. Anyway, he really clarified what Turdferg23 was trying to say. And just so I don't get it wrong, I'm gonna go ahead and read my summary that I wrote of S.G. John, 1987's reply. He basically says that ETFs can be thought of as a container which are comprised of multiple different stocks. He then goes on to explain that hedge funds can buy these ETFs, then they can decide to short or long any of the stocks that they contain. He says that there's a term for that, it's called in-kind. I had never heard of that before, but that's something I wanna look up for sure. He then goes on to explain that the reason hedge funds would want to do this is to hide their short interest, to potentially prevent another short squeeze that could cost them a ton of money. And so if these hedge funds are being sneaky and hiding the fact that that they're shorting these stocks again, 
potentially people won't learn about it and they won't try to short squeeze them again and cost them so, so much money. Anyway, if this is all true, maybe there's a legitimate reason why the Redditors are all trying to do another short squeeze. Maybe they really are costing those hedge funds a lot of money and maybe they're gonna drive up the price even further. Because remember, the point of a short squeeze is to drive up the price so high that those people holding short positions on any of those stocks get desperate and want to sell those quickly, thereby driving up the price even further and making the people who drove up the prices in the first place a lot of money. And of course, this has a lot of risk associated with it. Maybe that price run up is going to just tumble and fall. Nobody really knows what's gonna happen. Maybe the hedge funds aren't really holding so many short positions and maybe this data is incorrect. I don't know. I'm just reading Reddit and telling you guys what I read. Honestly, I'm really not sure what's happening or why it's happening. These are all just my theories that I wanted to share with you because I think personally they're kind of rational. But really, this is all my wild imagination and crazy conjecture and it probably isn't actually real. If you are interested in this kind of stuff, you should really do your own research and draw your own conclusions. Now that said, I also wanted to mention that I'm a very proud holder of a single share of GameStop. I bought in at $65 and currently I'm up almost three times what I put in originally, which is awesome. <laughs> I will also say that those $65 that I put into GameStop a few weeks ago, I totally don't care about the $65. If it goes to zero, who cares? I realize that I'm gambling and not investing here and I hope that you see that as well. Now, even though I could go sell my stock right now for three times profit, I don't think I'm going to because again, I really don't care about that initial $65 that I put into it. And I think maybe it'll go up, maybe it won't, but I just like the stock. That said, I'm also not going to be putting more money into GameStop stock right now, because if I did, I would actually start to care about that money that I'm putting in. And if I lost out on it, then I would be pretty upset. And so I wanna be extremely clear, I'm not telling you to go buy GameStop right now. I'm not going to drive up that hype any further and I'm not telling you not to invest in it either. You really need to make your own decisions here. And as I would tell any friend who wanted to invest in the market, never put any more money into the market than you're willing to lose. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching so much. Let me know in the comments below what you think is driving up the cost of GME right now. And if you made it this far, consider subscribing. I just started this new YouTube channel and I'll be releasing a video weekly is my goal. So go ahead and subscribe so you can get all my latest content and don't forget to drop a like on your way out. Anyway, thanks again for watching, have a wonderful day, and until next time.